Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study has looked into a specific nutrient and how it can help us to maintain sound cognitive function as we age. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. As we all know, with aging comes progressive changes in our brain structure and in a reduction in our cognitive abilities. The first changes actually appear in early adulthood, when cognitive abilities such as processing speed and efficiency, encoding new memories, working memory and reasoning skills unfortunately start to decline. On the other hand, crystallized knowledge such as vocabulary or general information was observed to remain stable on average until around the age of 60. The good news is that the decline in cognitive function is greatly impacted by our lifestyle choices, such as physical activity, social contacts and nutrition, which can be influenced all at the individual level. For example, research has revealed a positive relationship between increased consumption of omega-3 fatty acids and improved cognition, and also in decreased neuronal loss and with other key brain measurements. However, some studies have found absolutely no association at all between omega-3 supplementation and cognition, and others have only reported small effects on cognition as well as executive functions or even memory. The discrepancies between these results indicate there might be differences in the kinds of impact that diet has on specific cognitive abilities and on specific regions of the brain. And more research is definitely needed to untangle those complex brain relationships. In this latest study, the researchers explored a healthy, cognitively normal aging population. They focused on measuring the levels of omega-3 fatty acids and their correlation to cognitive function and also to brain volume. 40 people conducted all steps of the study and the participants were aged between 63 and 90 with a mean age of 76 years. So the studied population was composed of Seventh Day Adventist church members. Members of that church are known for being relatively healthy. They have an active lifestyle, both social and physical, and they follow what's considered a healthy diet pattern. They also don't smoke and they don't drink alcohol. You may have heard of this religious group. A community in California was designated as one of the blue zones. So the researchers measured the levels of red blood cell omega-3 fatty acids and then compared it to brain volume and cognition by performing MRI scans and cognitive assessments. Specifically, they measured both EPA and DHA and then calculated the participants omega-3 index this is a combination of EPA and DHA that's weighted to predict omega-3 levels in red blood cells. The researchers noticed variability in the associations of omega-3 fatty acids, cognition and brain region volume, as well as brain thickness. EPA and omega-3 fatty acid index were associated with better results on delayed memory and also processing speed assessments. However, the results did not correlate with working memory or with executive function. Now, based on previous studies, the researchers expected to see more pronounced associations between omega-3 fatty acids and the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the part of the brain that's involved with our learning and also with our memory. However, they did not find that any omega-3 fatty acids that they tested had any correlation with hippocampal volume at all. Instead, they observed the EPA and omega-3 were correlated with entorhinal cortical volume, a region of the brain involved in learning and memory that has input and output relationships to the hippocampus. EPA, DHA and the omega-3 index were also correlated with total white matter volume. Previous research found a relationship between white matter microstructure, diets high in omega-3 and also cognitive function. These researchers speculated about several ways in which omega-3 fatty acids might have an influence on white matter. Some included decreasing inflammation or oxidative stress, involvement in axonal loss, or preservation of fibers vulnerable to aging. However, unfortunately, they did not directly test any of these possibilities. On the plus side, this specific study has certain features that separate it 
from previous studies in the field. For example, it measures fatty acid levels in a way that reflects consumption in the last 120 days. This gives researchers a long-term view compared to other methods that reflect fatty acid levels based on just a few days consumption. Additionally, the previous study of this specific cohort showed that its participants have had this stable and consistent diet throughout their lives, again suggested that the observed effect is the result of a long-term diet and specific lifestyle choices and not a short-term treatment or even short-term supplementation. Two-thirds of the study participants followed either a vegetarian or a vegan diet. This dietary pattern is not representative of the general population, so the study's results may not apply to other groups. Now, the authors also point out a few other limitations of their research, including the small cohort population. The sample size limited the ability of the researchers to adjust the analysis for several genetic or lifestyle factors. However, since the study population, the seven-day Adventists, usually follow similar lifestyles, those factors are unlikely to greatly impact the results of this specific analysis. As is usual with association studies, the researchers point out they cannot determine a causal relationship between the observed associations. They recommend more in-depth studies regarding the link between omega-3, fatty acids, and cognitive ability by utilizing different neuroimaging techniques and studying more people for a much longer period of time. So what are the ways that you can raise your omega-3 levels if you wish to do so? Well, the foods high in omega-3 include fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, and sardines, and also oysters. And for vegans and people that don't like fish, you can look at flaxseed, chia seeds, walnuts, and also look into soybeans. Now, if you'd like to go down the supplementation route, at present, Do Not Age and Pro Health Longevity both offer omega-3 supplements. And there are links in the description below to these products. And if you use the code MYNMN at checkout, you can get either a 10 or a 15% discount. They are affiliate links, so if you do use them, I will receive some remuneration from the company. And if you do use them, I would like to say thank you very much in advance. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So not a clinical trial, but some very interesting results all the same. I think we can all agree that there is no one study that shows including omega-3 in our diet, either through food or through supplementation, points to an ironclad reason to include this nutrient in our diet. However, the preponderance of evidence so far is that it's probably better to have higher levels rather than lower levels in our body. Now, omega-3 is not normally included in the CBC, that's a complete blood count. But if you're interested in testing your omega-3 levels, do not age, now have an omega-3 home test. It also includes vitamin D. And again, there's a link in the description below to this test. And again, if you use the code MYNMN at checkout, you can also get a 10% discount here too. Also, let me know in the comment section of the YouTube video what you think of this latest study. Uh, give it a score out of 10, one being it was a terrible study and probably not worth reading, and 10 being very good study, lots of good information. And also let me know, how do you keep your omega-3 levels high if you do? And also, I'd be interested to know, has anyone taken yet the Do Not Age home test for omega-3 and vitamin D? Uh, 